Welcome. Thank you very much for staying with us. You're still watching Daybreak on Trust Television. Now it's time for us to look at some selected national dailies and see what this national dailies are saying, what stories made it to the front page this morning. And we will start with Daily Trust. The lead story here this morning says many fear healed as IPOV marks Biafra Day. Riders attached to the story says soldiers among casualties Students sleep in schools to write white exams. Page 4 has details of that. And then we have lots of pictorials here. I think it's connected to the 12 new ministries and agencies created by Governor Booney. A light up your service delivery space. That is uh, the second one. You might just want to get details of all of that story. And that's about the stories in the front of the Daily Trot newspaper this morning and then we move on to vanguard um vanguard has a lead story this morning and it says a minimum wage now the minimum wage it says labor may begin nationwide strike on monday eve so the right is attached to this story is that today's meeting to decide next line of action and that's coming from labor and then governors gang up stalling minimum wage negotiations that's according to sources and then another writer says as tripartite committee reconvenes after labor's tuesday workout the last one says federal government please pleads labor's understanding all right those are the writers attached to the lead story on the minimum wage and uh, let's take a look at um just above the lead story uh, there's something about the presidential task committee and they recommend 800 naira per dollar customs duty rate. Then on local government autonomy, Supreme Court gives governors seven days to respond to federal government suit. Page 7 has details of that story. Then U.S. court finds Donald Trump guilty on all courts in historic criminal trial to be sentenced July 11. Get details of that on page 5. And uh, let's go to Weavers now. Court stops and Merule, 24 others from parading as speaker and lawmakers. Page 12 has details of that story. Let's go to the bottom street. Federal government inaugurates interministerial committee on review of intellectual property and policy. Page 14 has details. Then GTI shows Tinubu rebutted scaling of security, says ex British diplomat. Page 8 has details. And uh, we have a pictorial here where we have Senator uh, for, um, from left, we have Senator Ben Bruce, Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Doris Uzoka Nite, and Honorable Minister of Arts and Culture and Creative Economy, Hanatu Musa, and uh, Permanent Secretary, Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Nura Abba. Actually, they were parading um, at the Ministerial Committee on Reviewing National Intellectual Property Strategy and Policy. In Abuja, you might just want to get details of that. Uh, page 14 has details of all of that. And then on Biafra Day, three soldiers killed. A sit at home turns bloody in southeast. Page 13 has details. Come as district heads pledge loyalty to Sanusi amid legal total. All right, the governor use of meat rebado and meat total. Page 8 and 9 of the Vanguard newspaper has details of that story. And in sports, World Cup qualifier blow for Eagles as Leverkusen star Keller opts out. All right, so how that is going to take a toll, you might just want to get details of that on page 31 this morning in the Vanguard newspaper. And that's about the stories in the Vanguard newspaper. Let's move on to the nation quickly. Uh, we have the masthead says Tunubu Lord Makinde opens 76.67 kilometer Alao Akala Road. That is on page 6. Then 30,000 successful applications in for student loan. 9.5 million visit portal in one week. Page 5 has details of that story. And then security has improved on that scene. It says ex-UK envoy. And the court to sentence Donald Trump for felony July 11. Let's come down a bit. We have council autonomy battle rages at Supreme Court. Page 2 has details. All right. And then we have you know, facilitations, and that's it on the Nation newspaper this morning. And um, we could just take one more and then we call it a wrap for 
today. Let's take this day. This day, uh, uh, the market says NMTCL, Exxon Mobil, a rich settlement agreement on $1.28 billion oil asset divestment and the deals near completion. It says National Oil Company gets additional 10% interest as parties await regulatory approval. And then we have a um, Presidential Tax Reforms Committee streamlines taxes into eight categories. What categories? You might just want to find out on page eight. Then at meeting with northern leaders, Tinubu says growing out of school children unacceptable. Rather, such after the story says praises Ribado on improving security and six effective local government. And then he says he won't hesitate to sack non-performing ministers. All right, details of that story is on, it started on the front page, but you continue reading on page five. In historic first, Trump found guilty on all 34 counts in Hirsch money trial. And uh, this was a rigged trial by a conflict corrupt chart. That's coming from the ex-president. You might just want to get details of all of that story. And that is where we draw the curtains uh, this morning for taking some of the stories in the uh, selected national dailies that we talked about. Now it's time for us to look at it critically. We have our reviewer here in the studio and uh, Malam Nuruddin Abdullah of the 21st Century Chronicle is our reviewer this morning, just like always on Fridays. Good morning and thank you for Good joining morning, us Mar this Dear. morning. Yes, now, um, talking about what's happening in Imo State, it says many feared killed as I of Mac Biafra Day. This is not the first time that, you know, we've been talking about the Biafra Day, the seat at home, and look at why students are writing the exams at the moment and some of them have to sleep in their schools just to write the exam. And that is evident that the government does not even recognize this day as a public holiday or as a sit at home, just like this prescribed people of Biafra has painted this. What can you make of this turnout of events? I think it's um, fortunate that the um, IPOB um, issue is still uh, reverberating, particularly in our political system and you know for more than a year this sit at home stuff has been ongoing mm. in the southeastern part of the country you know they picked monday at the beginning of the um, week. week and the governors particularly of the south um, east of the southeastern state you know seems helpless we thought that uh the buhari's government handling of the issue was not that uh, effective. So we thought when Tinubu came, there will be a sort of, um, you will get to the root of the matter, not necessarily uh, using force. Apparently, um, the military have been making uh, advances, you know, dis dislodging camps, arresting uh, some of the kingpins. Uh, neutralizing them as it were. But it seems that the issue is still there. Hmm. Uh, Namdi Kanu is still uh, in, custody. In, in custody, facing all manner of multiple cases in various in courts. Hmm. You, you, you understand? So my understanding is this. If there will be a political solution to this, let it be. You understand? Hmm. Look at it now. Our soldiers have been killed almost on a daily basis. Before this, the last week, Hmm. They dislodged uh, military outposts, killed soldiers, not to talk of the police and and and, and what have you. So I think maybe we should uh, the president uh, president we should apply the carrot and stick uh, approach okay. simultaneously to see how uh, this uh, madness is. And okay, so our correspondent from Imo State did file in a report where the governor was speaking about citizens should come out for their normal businesses on Monday. And uh, from this report, we saw that soldiers were killed. Do you think that that is a wise move? Should citizens be listening at this point come out, go about your normal businesses while, you know, things are not in shape yet? I think in the last two years, that has been the narrative being advanced, particularly by the governors, 
They don't want to be seem to be out of control. Mm. But in reality, they are not in control. You remember there are footages of these uh, IPOP guys, you know, weeping, sometimes uh, assaulting, even motorists mm. who are plying inter the block interstate roads. On you a remember? Monday. You, you, you understand? So the governors have failed in that aspect. But you know, as, as politicians, they don't want to admit it. And now, you know, they are putting the lives of the people at stake. Look at it now. So there should be the, the governors of the north, the southeast, you know, and they should find a way of using those, both carrot and state. Because the IPOP matter has been ongoing for a very quite long time. You know, sure. And unlike, let's say, Boko Haram or bandits, you know, there are people that we can talk to. Mm. Unlike the bandits, they have leadership, multiple leadership, subgroups in their hundreds and other people. And the essence of their own is not political. It's ransom for money. You understand? So I think there should be a way out of this. Let's try the other route. How do we end this? And Namdi Kanu, which is one of their leaders, that I think he's been respected by the I pop uh, group majority of them, maybe not all of them, you know, there should be a way out so that this thing can end. But what governors are saying, the governors can, okay, who defends the people? You see what happened. People are being whipped in trucks, a lot of um, trucks, flying interstate roads are being destroyed. So soldiers even have been killed, not to talk of police, I want to say. So there should be a way out, a political solution will bring an end to this. Let it be. The essence is let's end this madness. The businesses in the Saudi is, is suffering. Mm. Look at even the educational aspect. You remember recently in, in some years back, you know, a Catholic priest was, he was killed. Simply he was accused of allowing children to sit for an exam. I think this is why on echo. While they say that nobody should try it. Look at this self-destructive tendencies employed by the IPOP. If your children don't write these national exams, how will they get admission into universities, into polytechnics and what have you? So there should be a political solution out of this. And the governors in the South is, you know, they should stop politicking. You ask people to come on Monday, you know, who will they respect? There are not enough security to protect them from the madness and menace of, this, uh, of these gangs. They lose their money, they lose their lives, they lose their limbs. So I think they should intensify that effort. They have been trying, actually, to convince the presidency and the security superstructure here. Let's try it this way. But it hasn't yielded any positive result yet. Yeah, it's, it's, they started during Buhari's time. You know how Buhari was handling his, uh, his things, you know, he bungled it. Hmm. So there should be a way out, you know. The economy of the South is, is suffering. The people are suffering. Everybody is suffering. Nigeria is losing it. It's men and personnel. That should stop. And now the education of the children is being jeopardized. If they don't sit for WAEP or NECO, how will they get admission into universities or whatever? It's a serious matter. It is a serious matter. Now, let's take a look at another matter that has been on the table for a while now. I mean, the minimum wage talk. Labor has staged workouts. The government has been adding maybe two, three thousand to formal negotiations. And this just goes on and on and on. And Labor is saying that they might begin strike on Monday if certain conditions are not met. Now, there's a meeting and this meeting will decide your next line of action. What can you make of this? Federal government pleading for Labour's understanding on 60, I think it was 58,000 naira the last time. I don't know if it, another 3,000 naira will be added to make it 61,000. But let's hear your thoughts. You know, uh, I've said it here before. Uh, the two sides are not realistic. Hmm. Why do Labor, you say that though? Yeah, of course. Particularly the Labour. Hmm. Their demand is outrageous. Okay. Said, some of the labor union leaders are employers of labor. How much are they paying their staff? Factor the economic realities. 
is their electricity, how much is the diesel, lit up diesel. Security. Multiple taxes, particularly when you're operating Abuja. Mm -hmm. Multiple taxes being enforced by talks. And so on and so forth. They are now, I think they have come, they have uh, now down to, is it 400 and... Let's be realistic. 465,000. <laughs> Look at our recurrent expenditure. Out of the 30 trillion budget, more than two thirds, less than 30% is actually going for capital um, expenditure. The rest is allowances, salaries, overheads, debt services, and what have you. Where will the government get money to? pay 400. It's not realistic. If they pay 400, can your employer pay you 400 mm. as the minimum? Can my employer pay me 400 as the minimum? So that's why we have to be realistic. So how realistic do you think that the labor can get? Maybe 100 or so with an agreement that after so 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 time, after so, so so improvement in certain sectors, we are going to adjust it to certain um, uh, um, figure or what have you. Mm. But if not, this meeting, is it not the same tripartite committee that spent almost one billion for their integration? So the whole thing, you know, is a vicious circle. Okay, now, when they go on strike, who suffers? Nigerians. And the way things are now, we go, the labor, particularly during the Buhari, since the Buhari came, mm. you know, they go on strike for reasons that are not in, in, certainly in public interest. The labor did not go on strike for when the, the foil price, look at the inflation. In the past, you know, when they talk, when you find a common man, say inflation, he doesn't know what it means, but now he knows. Because he knows the value, if he goes to go to a grocery market, he knows a, a bowl of onion, how much it is now. A pepper, how much it is now. One single tomato, how much it is now. A bag of rice, you, you on the purchasing power. What if you earn 50,000 in, in the last eight years, and now you have 70, 50,000, whatever. Mm -hmm. So the labor should be realistic, so that you know they should stop this being doing this drama. 450 is not realistic. Right. And the government should be serious about this, adding 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, no, 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 no. If it is 100, if it is 150, let be it. And let's move forward, you understand. But importantly, particularly at the public service level, mm -hmm. the staff should have a KPI. KPI. Okay. They, they should implement KPI. Every worker should have a schedule of duty. Only you go to an office, you see <laughs> and 10 people with watching Z Wall, watching Africa Magic, or. And get paid at the and end. And get of the paid month. and complain when the. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Sarah uh, Abdullah, editor of 21st Century Chronicle, for your review this morning on some of the selected stories that appeared in the national dailies that we have taken this morning on the show. Thank you so much. Yeah, most welcome. Thank you for having me here. All right, so that's how we call it a day for daybreak this morning. It's been an interesting two hours of taking a look at what's happening in Nigeria and, of course, a little bit of beyond. But do not go anywhere because sports will be your next sport, uh, stop at the top of the hour. Do not go anywhere. My name is Martia Umar. I'll see you again some of the time. Stay tuned.